ऑनरेबल राष्ट्रपति जी इट इज आर ऑनर एट वंस अगेन वी आर विद यू विद आर हेड्स ऑफ मिशन हु आर अटेंडिंग दी एट्थ एच यू एम्स कॉन्फ्रेंस टू शेयर वॉट दे हैव डन इन द ईयर एंड टू टेक बैक विद दैम द गाइडेंस दैट विल कम फ्रॉम द लीडरशिप इन इंडिया वी आर अवेयर ऑफ योर पैटर्नेज टू द Ministry of External Affairs, in your capacity earlier as the minister, and you have always been very kind in providing guidance and with your experience in telling us as to what needs to be done and what needs to be taken forward. We had uh, the Prime Minister today, and uh, he has been able to provide us certain guidelines. And I am sure when you speak to us today. you will be able to further tell us as to what needs to be done to become effective in taking the image of india in the world with this may i invite you sir for speaking to the court honorable minister of state external affairs dr v k singh heads of indian diplomatic missions foreign secretary and other senior officers in the ministry of external affairs good evening to all of you it's a pleasure to meet you once again on your annual conference at the outset i would like to congratulate the ministry of external affairs once again hosting this conference it is always a very useful exercise for the ministry to take stock make their assessments and enunciate policy guidelines for implementation in the ensuing years the theme smarter diplomacy swifter delivery appropriately reflects the need of the hour i am glad that you have had the opportunity to work on it as a group and define the manner in which you will take this phrase as your motto and also your goal friends i understand that you have already had 3 days of stimulating sessions in which you have reviewed the full range of your responsibilities interacted with each other each of your functions in the distinct local environment as you strive to realize india's foreign policy objectives in the country where you are posted with each host country you need to have a perception and historical knowledge pursuits a definite agenda and address a specific set of bilateral issues you are expected to prioritize your endeavors in the short medium or, or long term keeping in mind bilateral convergences and the larger regional and global context this year you have to address the dramatic changes in the international political and security scenario the traditional equations of power hyperpower and global influences have been altered in a manner that few anticipated there is a new world order 
all of humankind today is frankly challenged by compelling transnational issues that need to be urgently addressed collectively and innovatively if we want to challenge this and find out an acceptable solution whether it is drug resistant viruses environmental degradation pollution and climate changes or energy water and food security no single nation can claim to be free of deep concerns on account of these issues the conflicts in the middle east have become more complex economic migrations from the african countries followed by a mass influx from our torn areas has brought once flourishing european continent to the brink population across the continents are becoming inward looking and apprehensive the starting point or causative factors matter less now at this point it is far more pertinent to deal with impact that these events will have on the world i have visited the region in 2015 and 16 and have hosted many heads of states and governments from the middle east gulf and african continent during 5 years of my presidency all of these heads without exception had a common vision that peace in their region imperatives for development was their highest priority their approaches were similar they shared with me their belief that to succeed any reform process adopted by them should be owned and led by their own people and that lasting solutions could be achieved by abjuring forces and violence and choosing tolerance dialogue persuasion instead thus i do believe that at this stage the dynamics of the new world order must be well analyzed and understood as head submission you shall have to ensure that india as a respected and responsible player in the world affairs and an emerging economic power responds to the new challenges appropriately in her best advantage safeguarding her own national interests at all times i would stress that this is a moment for strategic foreign policy making leadership and pursuit of an independent foreign policy based on principle pragmatism and the time honored philosophy of bosudhai vakutumbakam in this context i cannot but marvel at the enduring relevance in the philosophy of unity and dharma enunciated by swami vivekananda and the values of truth and non-violence that mahatma gandhi exemplified sustainable development recycling giving back to nature preservation of our environment conservation of energy harmony between people tolerance among religions equality between men and women peace and disarmament these principles continue to hold the key 
to resolving the most complex challenges that con confront the world today. I do feel optimistic that sincere and closely coordinated efforts by the international community through bilateral, multilateral, regional as well as sub-regional initiatives can do and will eventually prevail. Friends, as the world's largest functional democracy, we have assisted many friends in building and strengthening their democratic structures and institutions. But we have always taken care to avoid being prescriptive. Our efforts in humanitarian assistance and peacekeeping under the aegis of the United Nations and its organs have been appreciated and valued and virtually every member of the United Nations see the logic of India having a permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council. It is also a matter of great satisfaction that one of the pillars of India's foreign policy on the sound doctrine of non-interference in the internal affairs of other nations. It has served us well and has helped India to earn the trust of friends and partners across the globe. Our sincere adherence to this doctrine had also signaled that we will expect our friends and others to treat us in the same way. Dear friends, we may be a developing country, but we are amongst the fastest growing emerging economies. I am glad that the reforms and recent initiatives of the Government of India have made our economic economy attractive for investors and our industrial sector viable for prospective partners. I also welcome the renewed emphasis of our government on outcomes rather than process. Today, technology has revolutionized the way we share our knowledge, do business, consult, and even the way we do our diplomatic work. In some countries, it is being used to create vast capacities for eavesdropping and cyber warfare. You are no doubt looking at all these issues and addressing them comprehensively. I would also like to emphasize and add that in addressing the global and transnational issues like maritime security, proliferation risks surrounding weapons of mass destruction, cyber security, international terrorism, drug trafficking, illegal migration, and transnational crimes, our plan should be comprehensive and clear. Friends, the world is tiring of statements and resolutions. Our effort should be to work with like-minded nations and global institutions to swiftly generate effective solutions and implement them effectively. Every well-concerned effort will have some positive outcome. So I would say, take the initiative, you are out in the field and your efforts and inputs are most vital. Many of you have met me on various occasions 
and briefed me on our governmental dialogues and initiatives with your host country. The issue of bilateral agenda based on common aspirations. I am aware that you are working in challenging circumstances. Most of you have small teams. While visiting your capitals, I have often noticed our mission stretching resources to use them optimally. I congratulate you for doing your job excellently with these constraints. In your consular visa, passport service, as well as your in interaction with the Indian diaspora, I am glad that you accord due priority the Indian community. Whether it is persons of Indian origin, expatriates, tourists or businessmen, they all consider the Indian Embassy and Ambassador to be their own. From Papua New Guinea to Belarus and Ivory Coast to Finland, I found the so-called Indian community not only very supportive but also often supplementing our mission's resources. This was heartening and yet another example of their generosity and spirit. Please convey my best wishes to them. As you prioritize your resources to project India positively and bring her close to partners and populations across the world, I call upon you to keep close to you the talisman of Gandhiji. Shut your eyes. Consider the humblest man you have come across and ponder what benefit your action will give to him. And I am confident you will get the right answer to remove all your doubts. As I look back, I am convinced that there is much to look forward. I continue to have great expectations from you. With these words, once again, I congratulate you and wish you safe back to your post. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the patience. Yes.